Okay, so tonight we're going to start off with a really short uh, awareness practice, something that you can just touch into yourself and luxuriate in your body and the present moment. And then I'm going to ask you some speed journaling questions. And then I'm going to talk about what makes the Dragon Year so special and why our actions, particularly right now, are so critically important. Uh, we'll talk about practices and flowers that can assist with the next six months and where we can put our focus on to be of best benefit and to make the most impact. And I'll give you a couple ways on how to uh, give your intentions a massive boost. So we'll just start with the awareness practice. Um, if you're sitting, you can sit. If you're lying down, you can uh, lie down, whatever is comfortable for you. If you want to close your eyes, you can close them. If you want to keep them open, you can Rest your eyes on one point in front of you. And just start by noticing your body. Are there any areas that have tension? Where does it feel spacious and expansive? Where does it feel tight and constricted? And then if you need to move or wiggle or stretch, you can do whatever you need to do to feel better in your body. starting with the top of your head, noticing the top of your head and all your hair and all the little muscles in your forehead and around your eyes and the muscles around your mouth and all around your ears and all the muscles in the back of your neck softening all the muscles in your head. If there's any crunch in the back of your neck, just tip your chin closer to your chest, opening up the back of your neck. Relaxing all the muscles in your shoulders, all down your arms, down to your fingertips. Noticing your throat, your chest, all the soft parts of your belly. From the top of your back, all the way down your spine to the bottom. Your waistline, your bum, your hips, your pelvic area, your thighs, all the way down to your knees, your shins, your calves, your ankles, the tops of your feet, the bottoms of your feet, and all the way down to your toes. And then noticing the sounds that you hear around you in your environment, even the subtle sounds. Noticing how sound travels through space. <clears throat> sound gives you an idea of the space around you. And then noticing your breathing. Are you breathing fast or slow, deep or shallow? You don't have to change it, just noticing. Are you breathing in your chest? Are you breathing in your belly? You breathing in your back. See if you can luxuriate three whole breaths of just like noticing how good it feels to breathe in and breathe out. And then bringing your attention into your heart space. Just take a moment to give yourself credit for all that you do and all that you are. And we'll just make the intention that all of us put our collective energy together. All the effort that it took for us to be here, everyone listening to the recording after this moment that we dedicate that so that we all may gain some important insight tonight that there's an aha moment, something that is very helpful and useful and expansive. And may that expansiveness ripple out to everyone that we touch.
Now, when you're ready, you can open your eyes if they're closed. Okay, so we are in the dragon year. Um, there might be some people who have not seen any Zoom calls from me before. So I just want you to know that there's like a whole team of support that if in any point during this call, there's something that you don't understand, um, we can help you. Um, but just to start out by talking about the dragon year, um, I was talking to someone earlier saying that none of us in our lifetime have ever experienced the wood dragon year, nor will we ever again. The next dragon year is not until 12 years from now. And that will be a whole different element. So we have the good fortune at this time to be alive during the wood dragon year. Wood is like new possibilities and potential and life starting, right? So everything that we do right now will affect the next 20 years of our life. Um, and that's why we really have put a lot of things into motion like this planner in, in an effort to really support all of us to like, okay, take the time and figure out is there something I want to change, right? Because it's such a, like a ripe and powerful time where we can make a ripple effect into not just the next 20 years, but really the rest of our life. So if there's anything that you want to empower yourself with, anything you're struggling with, any habits you want to change, something you want to improve in your health, something you want to nourish or ask for help or get support, um, now is the time. Now is the time to do good things, to make good choices, Um to really work towards more beauty and purity in the world. Um, and also, if you're like finding yourself in a leadership position or you're involved in healing or you're doing good things and creating more positivity on the planet, it's also going to be really important for you to take care of yourself and nourish yourself. Um, it's time to focus now on the knowingness. So there are plenty of influences, right, in the news and social media. There are a lot of external influences that want to, um, you know, like steal our attention, in fact. And right now is the time to focus on our inner knowing. Um, there are, you know, small groups of people that are controlling, that are making big moves in terms of like owning farmland and buying up real estate and, you know, determining what we wear, what we eat, right? There are so many different influences coming in and it's extremely important for us to become leaders right now. It's imperative that we make time to tap into our inner wisdom, to meditate or to take quiet time for yourself, to take breaks, whatever it is that you do to recenter yourself and get in alignment and get in touch with your inner knowing and your sense of self-trust. Um, leaders need to be humble and skillful that's one of the best signs of a leader. Uh, challenging experiences will put us to the test. I think that's one of the beauty of, of being leaders. And anyone on this call is a leader because if you're interested in maximizing your potential and making a positive impact in the world, you're leading. Um, so whatever our challenges are, we have to go through them in order to evolve and become more powerful. I was just thinking um, right now we've been uh, focusing on uh, doing a business in a developing country. And it's been actually about one year. We've been going through all these hoops and red tape and challenges. And and then suddenly there will be some kind of miracle or magic, right? And that's kind of how life is, is if we just stick with the challenges, we can use them to evolve into the next iteration of who we are. Um, so another aspect of right now, this timing is to focus on your priorities. What is the most important thing to you? Um, and taking time to just, you can either like think about it or you can write it down or you can speak about it, or you can just take a quiet moment and say, what is the most important thing to me? Sometimes we don't even like know, right? Like what is the most important thing? What do I really, really want? Uh, sometimes we get in the habit of working really hard or overworking and we deplete ourselves. So focusing on our priorities could be like external, like making something happen and accomplishing something, or it could also be like tending towards ourself. Um, I would say that probably all of us think too much. We overthink, we doubt ourselves, and we second guess. This is what I'm seeing a lot lately. And it's going to be the next six months is going to be a practice in learning how to never second guess ourselves. Um, it's going to be a time of taking action taking action, take action, take action. Um, it'll be about dissolving the obstacles that hold us back and being able to tell the truth and be like a sword in our actions and in our words. 
at the same time, it'll be like softly opening, you know, like a flower in a sense and learning how to open in new ways to life, opening to unexpected adventure and even opening to um, how to take what are so-called negative experiences and make them uh, work for us. So I love the six month time period. It might be strange. Like we just created this planner. We thought, is anyone going to get a planner for six months? It's kind of odd, right? Normally everyone likes to plan out their whole year. I've always worked with six months when I used to do consultations full time. I would always ask people the first time I met them, if you want, you know, if your life was super amazing and like exactly as you wanted it within six months from now, what would be happening? And it's just like a really manageable time frame, right? It's also, uh, I've learned from so many astrologer friends that it's a great time to work with the moon. So whatever intentions you make on new moon, which is coming up here, usually they become manifest six months later on the full moon. So it's just a really nice um, time period for us to like really actually see a difference, right? Also, right now we're halfway through the dragon year. So they'd say in Chinese astrology, the dragon's been eating up all the things that have come up in the first part of the year, and it will start to have digestive issues. What does that mean? That we may begin to start to have digestive issues. Um, if that's the case, you know, and we have so many things going on right now than we did, you know, even just 10 or 20 years ago, like with food sensitivities and bloating and GMOs and pesticides and my microbiome is off and leaky gut, like all kind of things, right, that are new in this time period for the digestive system that we didn't have to necessarily deal with when we were younger. One way to kick off this uh, six months of your life is to do a smoke offering. We have one planned for um, this month. It's a very, very special, impactful, and powerful um, practice. And this month is specifically being dedicated to all of our digestive systems. And it's a really cool um, practice because it's something that you can do for yourself or you can dedicate it to someone you love. It doesn't necessarily have to be about digestive system. That's our overall theme, but you can um, you can dedicate the ceremony to anyone who is struggling or anyone in your life who you want to give an extra boost to. So I'm going to talk a lot about the next six months, and I'm going to get into detail and go month by month. But first, I want um, I want to talk about you, right? This is when you get out your pen and pencil and paper. I want to eliminate something about you to you. I'm going to ask you 21 questions. They're kind of like journal prompts. We call it speed journaling because um, I'll go kind of quickly. I won't give you a lot of time to answer just because I want you to be in the practice of answering the first thing or the first three things that come to mind and just jot them down. It could be words. It could be phrases. Try not to edit yourself. If something comes up that seems really odd, just write it down. Try not to edit. So the first question is, when do you find yourself fatigued and depleted and what causes this? And we can resend out these questions. I know that Taylor made a beautiful PDF and pre-sent them if you have the opportunity. Um, you can also write your answers down in the planner if you already have one or just a random piece of paper. This is a great way to get a snapshot of you right now and then be able to compare it to six months later when we do another one of these calls. When do you find yourself fatigued and depleted? What causes fatigue and depletion for you? Second question, when do you overwork yourself? Sometimes we get so busy and overworked, we just kind of get self-absorbed into our own little worlds. When do you find yourself working too much? And what practices can you implement to keep you recharged and open? The next question is really interesting. If you were to operate more within a community versus alone, what would that allow you to do more quickly in terms of energy, positivity, action, expansion, awareness in the world? Or if you are a part of a family unit or a community, 
Are there times that you get a sense that when you collaborate as a group, you can do X faster, more efficiently, more powerfully? Or just in general, how do you feel about being a part of a group or community? Okay, the next question. When do you notice that you second guess yourself or feel that you're not ready yet? Or that there's something else you need to prepare or study or learn in order to take action on something? <clears throat> Next question, when do you allow others to influence you? And this is like when, so for example, when you trust them more than you trust yourself. When do you catch yourself trusting someone else more than you trust yourself? Next question, what inspires you to take action? There could be many things. What are the things that inspire you to take action? Next question, what do you do when problems arise? So what's just like your, something happens, it's a problem. What do you usually do? What's the first thing you do? First, second, third thing that you do if some kind of problem arises. Arises at work, arises at home, something went wrong with your car, something went wrong with your pet, some kind of problem. And the next question is similar, related. What's your MO when something unexpected and possibly negative or could be viewed as negative arises? Like, what do you typically do? If you get upset, that's fine. <laughs> this is just, no one else is going to see your answers but you. <laughs> you can throw a fit. It's really just sort of noticing our patterns, right? What ha what do we do if something like unexpected and negative? The next question, when are you the most resourceful? When do you find yourself being resourceful? Is it when someone else comes to you with a problem? Is it when something's broken? Is it thinking of new ideas? When are you the most resourceful. Okay, here's a fun one. When do you catch yourself being rigid or judgmental? Either with yourself or with other people. Oftentimes it's more common that it's with ourself. Sometimes we do it with other people. When do you find yourself being rigid or judgmental? I really try to just write down the first thing that comes to mind. I can guarantee you that most of these things will change in the next six months anyway. Next question is, when do you let loose and open up to what's around you? When do you find it most easy, the easiest to let loose and open up to what's around you?
Number 12, when do you employ strict timelines versus just letting things unfold? Or maybe it's the other way around. You're too loose. Like, would you like to have more strict timelines or would you like to just let things unfold or a combination of the both? What do you typically do and what do you want? Number 13, can you ask for what you want? And do you? No, in what areas of your life do you ask for what you want? Some people have a hard time. They bring you the wrong meal at the restaurant. And it's like, oh, I'll just eat this. It's okay. I don't even want to tell them that it's the wrong thing. Some people have a really easy time with that. And a harder time asking for the things that are really deeply meaningful. What is it easy for you to ask for what you want? And what is it? difficult for you to ask for what you want. number 14 when are you shy or when do you avoid hard conversations or you can think about it like when was the last time that you were shy or the last time that you avoided a hard conversation And then number 15, when was the last time that you were shameless, direct, blunt, and asked for exactly what you wanted? What was the outcome? I guess if you know what you want, it's easy to ask for it. Sometimes we don't even know what we want. Sometimes that's the first step. Number 16, where there are times when life becomes devoid of adventure, maybe like a little boring or routine or tiring or exhausting. Is there at any point right now that you experience or any area of your life that's just kind of meh, that you could recharge with some vitality or energy? Maybe a better way to ask that question is, what areas of your life are meh? of your life would you like to charge up number 17 what when was the last time that you felt adventurous when was the last time or times or jot down the times when you felt adventurous Number 18, when do you feel that life is full of beauty? What's happening? What are you doing when you get that, wow, life is so beautiful feeling? What catalyzes, like, what are you doing? What's happening that all of a sudden you feel overcome by beauty? Number 19, what are the things that you learned in the last six months? Like top three things or top five things that you learned in the last six months. That would be, I mean, now, May, April, May. It's like since the beginning of the year. What have you learned in this year since the end of the year? Or even just like, what happened in the last six months? Sometimes it's easier just to ask ourselves, like, what were like the major events that happened in the last six months? And then you can kind of get a grasp on what we what you've been learning. This can be like internal things. This can be like work things. It can be 
I learned how to skateboard. I learned how to birth a child. It could be anything. Two more questions. Number 20 is what are your top three outer goals for the next six months? So that would be like, when I say outer, it's like accomplishments, right? Like I just really want to get this done in the next six months, like an outer external manifestation of something you want to do or accomplish or even embody, but more so like outer experience. I want to clean out my garage, you know, something really tangible. I want to paint the wall. I want to bring my kids to this park. There's so many things, right? This can be like your personal goals, spiritual goals, professional goals. Family goals. Kind of nice to take a minute halfway through the year and reflect. And you can write more later. The last question is, what are your top three inner goals for the next six months? That could be like how you want to feel. Or some habit you want to break, like, oh, I always get triggered when X, or I have a habit of not letting myself be nourished, or my health is really struggling because I'm always thinking this. Some kind of inner world that nobody else can see. No one else knows if you'll accomplish it or not, if unless they see it manifested in your actions and your words, but something inside for the next six months. You want to learn to be more expansive, more loving, not be triggered by X, Y, Z. Top three intentions for the next six months. I remember when I was traveling in Singapore, I realized there's in Singapore, there's such a, such a powerful culture of like knowing what you want. Even just like, what do you want to eat? Where do you want to go? Right. There's such a like sharpness and a clarity. And I realized when I was in Singapore, like, oh my gosh, like how do we get anything done if we don't know what we want? Right. And the more we can know what we want, the more we can just take five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes to write down, what do we want? Um, then we're clear on what we want. We know when it comes at us or we can do like make actions, take actions that just like lead us in tiny steps towards what it is we want. That's the first step. It's just knowing what we want. Okay. So I'm going to jump into the wood dragon year and then take it month by month. So for the second half of this dragon year, there are three major themes. It seems like crazy simple and it's, it's essentially like how to create the world that you want to live in and create the kind of life that you want to live. Um, super simple. It's about taking action, speaking the truth, slash asking for what you want, which requires knowing what you want, right? And being open. Those three things I think all of us collectively will be learning some lessons on in our own unique fingerprint way, right? All of us will be adopting new ways on how to take action, speak the truth, and be open. So in the month of August, August I think is one of my most favorite months um, so far because um, what I'm seeing a lot of is collaboration and how to communicate and how to like electrically spread information, awareness, positivity um, between people or groups. It's going to be about finding ways to be efficient, effective, like faster, by working with someone else or working in groups. It's like rally the troops, right? How can we collaborate on something to make it easier, faster, more impactful, more powerful, or more nourishing, right? Sometimes it's like, you know, we think we have to do everything alone and it's exhausting, right? If you think you have to 
like carry all the heavy stuff alone and do all the heavy lifting alone. And when there's a whole group of people and everybody's working together, things always go so much faster and so much more effortlessly, right? So here are some ways that I'm seeing this, um, you know, obviously becoming more and more apparent in our culture. And I think it's a key to expansion um, in anything that you're up to. But here's some like tangible kind of 3D ways of examples like Slack. If you've ever heard of Slack, it's like, you know, collaborative software that you can all work together um, or like a company WhatsApp mess, you know, then a lot of different, maybe not so much in the US, but in other countries, like a company will have a WhatsApp and you can directly communicate with a group of people or like group texts. How many of us are on group texts and we're having like group conversations when it wasn't as popular, you know, some years ago, we were just like one-to-one. -one. Now it's like much more group texts. Um, if you're into design at all, I know we are using a lot of Canva. It's like a, if you're familiar with Google Docs and Google Sheets where multiple, many people can be collabor collaboratively working on one document together, it's in the case of design. So you can be moving images and creating signs and presentations, and there could be 50 people working on one, you know, design uh, all at the same time. And how much faster and more interesting and dynamic it is. Um, what else? Community living. I just saw one of my friends was uh, moving to Spain this fall and she sent me this link of all of these families living in some type of community living, which I thought was really interesting. Or um, we've had a lot of expansion in the last few months with our company, Lotus Way, and our whole group of people connecting with this other company called Alive and Well. It's a wellness center that's in Dallas, Boulder, and Austin. And it's so interesting to watch a group of people connect with another group of people and things move so quickly, right? So even in the case of like, okay, so let's say the, the grid went down or there's a revolution or like something crazy goes happens in the world, right? Like, who are you going to rely upon? Like, who's your tribe? Who's your community? Who's your like core group of people? So you can look at it from a lot of different spectrums of just like, you know, you get a flat tire, who do you call? Or, you know, something happens and you really need support. Who do you rely on? Um, or you can look at it in terms of like growing an idea or getting a message across. How do you use collaboration and communities so that you can like tap into all that juice and exponentially, it's like one plus one is not two, right? Like one plus one, it's exponential. So in the month of August, and, you know, moving forward more and more and more, I think it's learning how can we be more exponential through collaboration and communities. I live or I'm part of like a giant community and I only have to make dinner one night a week and then all the rest of the night's dinner is made, right? That's another example. Like how can life be more nourishing? Maybe you um, have like a, a group of people who all have kids and then you take turns taking care of other people's kids, right? Parents have probably done this for a long time where it's like, this collaborative raising your kids style or being able to take a night off here and, and trading off. Right. So it's like, how can we like make things not only more efficient, but more nourishing and more fun and innovative if we're working collaboratively, the alternative, let me tell you about the alternative. And I'm sure we can all relate to this. the alternative is working too hard, right. Feeling like we have to do it alone. And sometimes we feel like this, even in communities and companies and organizations and families, right. We could be in a group, but we still feel like we are all alone and working too hard. Um, it's a habit, right. We feel exhausted, right. It's hard to receive help. Um, or we get depleted like either physically or energetically. We're moving too fast. We never take breaks. Right. Um, or maybe there are some of us who are lazy and we could put in more effort, right. Or a different type of effort or work smarter. Um, maybe we never take breaks to recharge or get in touch with our inner wisdom, right? That, that's the alternative. Um, so in order to help, uh, with, in order to help with, um, <laughs> can you hear the dog snoring? Like, why is it so cute when dogs snore, but not really cute when humans snore? Um, so for, for the month of August, I'm going to show you, um, a flower and we'll just lead you through like a little slideshow of flowers um, that can help with each month. So for the month of August, um, we're looking at wild buckwheat. This is a flower that teaches us the art of expansion without depletion. Like what if we could 
do something internationally and feel like revitalized and not depleted, right? Um, what would it take for a woman to have like eight children and feel like super nourished and revitalized, right? Like a lot of women had more babies when they had like a village to help take care of everything. So we're going to be learning about developing like this speedy transmission of collaborative energy um, and being able to mutually support each other, right? Like what's good for me is what's good for you. And somehow we help each other. Um, and there's this sense of wild buckwheat is so interesting at like teaching us how to like keep tabs on a community, right? Cause it's like, let's say your family, we'll call it like your family or your group of friends or think of a community that you have. You're energetically in touch with them, even when you're not talking, right? And then when you get in a room, you're even more connected. And then when you like work on a certain project together, you're even more connected. Sometimes you don't even need to use words. You don't need to use language. Like someone can anticipate, oh, this person needs this. Oh, that person needs this. And you kind of just start working like a colony of ants, right? <laughs> She's really snoring loud now. <laughs> Sawn logs over there. Oh, such a good nap. Um. So this flower can help us teach or help teach us how to concentrate our energy and use the power of interconnectivity to spread a message, a feeling, an energy, pure intention, a prayer, healing energy. Um, this is what we want to spread like lightning fire. And it's like, you know, we talk about like making a ripple effect. A ripple effect feels like a little bit softer and slower. The This effect is more like lightning, like electricity. So if you were going to have a mantra or like a Zen Cohen, you know, like a question to ask and you don't have to have the answer, but you're just like always asking the question and seeing what arises. The question for August is going to be what's possible, what's possible, what's possible, which I love that that's at the, the beginning of the six months because, you know, it's kind of coming back to that. What do I want? But it's framed in a different way. Like what's possible, right? It's kind of so open. It's like, not sure what's going to come in there. And maybe you ask yourself mentally, like, what's possible? And the answer of something comes in later. Okay, so that is August. Um, in September, in September, we're really going to focus on learning how to take action, even when we feel like we're not ready. And there's a lot of different ways of not ready. Not ready could be like, I don't have the energy. Not ready could be, I don't have enough information. Not ready could be, I didn't study enough. I'm not an expert enough. I'm not... Da, 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 enough. Um, I'm not well equipped enough. I don't have the right tools. Like we have all kinds of reasons that maybe we just are going to put something off and not take action. So in September, it's going to be a practice of not waiting for the perfect conditions. No more second guessing, right? This kind of um, not having the right tools is more just like an excuse. The, the alternative is like um, an unnecessary slowdown, right? It's like I'm not good enough. I'm not ready. I'm going to hesitate. My story's not interesting enough. Um, it just like slows us down. Right. And I'm not saying like, oh, you should like go skydiving and not know how to pull the report. Right. It's like, it's not about being irresponsible or making things up. It's about trusting yourself and trusting your experience and also letting yourself learn through experience. It's okay to just dive in and see what happens. Right. Um, I'm thinking of like, one really uh, dear friend of mine who is actually one of our wholesale partners and he's, you know, been doing all kinds of healing work for multiple decades, extremely um, well-studied and experienced guy in healing and has been doing it for a really long time and has like a, you know, really long waiting list of people for clients. And I remember when he first came across us and Lotus Way and the Flowerests, he was like trying to figure out how to incorporate them with his patients. And he was saying, yeah, but I, I can't do it until, you know, until I could like at least study with Katie and like learn all this flowers and this whole body work. And then I would be able to recommend it to my patients. Um, and this is a perfect example of like that, you know, where we feel like we have to know everything and actually we don't. It's like if something can benefit people, there's a way to just like connect them immediately, right? We don't have to study more or train more or wait till things are perfect. <clears throat> Another example recently is that um, my dog had to get some teeth pulled, right? And oh, there's this whole like challenging situation with like, she has a heart murmur and should we put her on this medication? And the vet's saying, you know, the surgeon's saying they wouldn't 
operate if she didn't take this heart medication and she had, you know, some cardiologist had recommended it six years ago and it didn't feel right to me. And I looked at a lot of stuff online and it didn't sound good. And the this didn't sound good. Right. I just didn't feel right about it. And, um, so for the last six years, she's been great. And then before the surgery was like, okay, we need to do this again and look at her. And then the guy checking out her heart said, great. I can tell she's been using that medication because she's doing awesome. And I was like, no, she hasn't been taking any medication. <clears throat> so in that moment, I felt proud of myself that like, I believed and trusted just in that internal sensation, also doing the research online and listening to other pet owners, right? And then ended up having to like do a short, short stint of putting her on this medication just so she could get surgery. And then being able to trust myself and her that there would be a method to taper her off. And then, you know, some bumps in the road and then being able to trust that I could find herbs as a replacement. I have and keep finding more and more stuff, right? I'm going to do like a blog post or an email about this because I think there are so many do like dogs and cats out there who have heart issues and there's a wealth of information in terms of herbal remedies. Um, but that's like another example of like, can you trust yourself? Um, and are you ready to trust yourself, right? In a new situation that you have zero experience, you're not a veterinarian, you're not a doctor, you're not a blah, 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 blah whatever it is that you, you know, maybe like, Someone wants to write a book and they're like, ah, oh, but I'm not a writer. I should take a workshop. I should take a course. I should something like that. Right. Um, now in September and in the next six months, it'll be about just taking action. Don't second guess yourself. Don't be influenced by other people. Don't hesitate. Don't hold yourself back. Oh my gosh. There are plenty of people that would want to tell you what's the right way. Right. And there's plenty of propaganda on the news and social media and all kinds of people that want to sway your opinion. And it's about coming back to what is it that you have an inner sense about and being able to trust your intuition. Like, imagine like how liberating would that be if you said, okay, from now on, I can just trust my intuition. I can just like operate and I'm not going to make a decision unless I'm hundred percent sure. And when I'm sure I'm just going to do it. It would be so liberating, right? If you never had to second guess yourself. Okay. So the alternative to taking action is to hold back, to stay small you know, to like let the risks go by, um, just to stay in our comfort zone. It's like the inventor that never shares his genius, you know, that has like invented all of these cool things and then like never shares it with anybody. Um, and then that can lead to regrets like, oh man, I should have taken action. I should have done this. I should have done that. Right. But if you just like jump in and take action, um, then you won't have any. One flower that can help with this for September is the wild geranium flower. It like hacks away at our habits and patterns and tendencies to wait for the perfect conditions, right? And just go for it. Have you ever been in a room of like, I don't know, a thousand people, you're at a conference or something and someone's public speaking and they ask for a volunteer to raise your hand and then you're like, oh, 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 oh no, oh, it's too many people. Ah, maybe what I have to say isn't really that important. Oh, maybe, right? Um, so wild geranium elixir will be something that's really going to help us sweep away our hesitation and put us in a state of action and also knowingness and being able to trust in our knowingness. We may not be perfect, right? But we're perfect for the job and there's nothing missing. There's nothing else that we need to acquire or attain or knowledge. The conditions are right and the timing is right. Um, so the question we'll want to be asking ourselves is like, how uninhibited can I be? Like, can I allow myself to operate with full trust in myself? to say, to act, to do, to speak, and never second guess myself. Of course, if we make a mistake, we can own up to it and change something, right? We can always change course. But that initial being able to take action without second guessing yourself is so liberating. So the mantra for that month will be to take action, take action, take action. Um, and then if any of you are on the call and you've never heard of flower remedies, it just occurred to me, maybe there are some of you that have never been on the call. They're totally different from essential oils usually taken internally. You can also use them externally. In this case, it's internally. We just add them to all our coffee, water, tea, and then they can also be taken internally, like in your mouth. And what we find is that it accelerates your personal growth, like the normal amount of personal growth you go and go through in six months gets accelerated to one or two months. So part of the reason why we want to also look at like the next six months is, can we even speed up the timeline, right? There may be things that you write down that you're saying, 
man, it would be awesome if there were X, Y, Z in January. If I accomplished this by January of 25, I would be over the moon, right? And you might just accomplish it next month. Okay, October. October is going to be about taking advantage of timing and opportunities. It's about resourcefulness and trusting yourself and people. There's also this like deep theme of trusting yourself, right? Really, really important for these times. Um, and particularly like when something bad happens, how to take advantage of that and not blame or go into the whole kind of story. Um, a couple examples would be like, you know, 2020 hits and they're saying like, everything's got to shut down. So like in our case, we were just like, no, I think we're essential. I think, I think we're essential. Um, we are essential, right? We know we're essential. We know people what we have, like absolutely more than ever now need what we have. So we just like kept on trucking and we helped more people than we've ever been able to help in 2020. Um, I just spoke to an Uber driver when I was in Dallas last week and he was telling us about this, you know, when they had that really terrible snowstorm and like roofs were all falling in and everything was ice and people didn't have electricity or water. And so he was telling me about this story and he said, you know, he didn't have electricity. All he had was a fireplace. And so he just luckily had enough wood that every night he'd come home and put the wood in his fireplace and sleep right next to his fireplace. Poor guy, he said all his plants died inside his house. He said inside his house, it was like two degrees or zero degrees. Terrible. But you know what he did? So like terrible, right? It's like, ah, terrible situation. You know what he did? He was an Uber driver. He took his like four by four truck and he did as much driving as he possibly could. He said it was warm in the car, right? So he stayed warm and he gave like a gazillion people rides everywhere. Um, and Uber was still in action. So he like made the most money he's ever made ever, right? Because he was just like helping others and taking advantage of the situation that was like bad to make it work for everybody and himself and everything, right? Um, so it's like, if you find yourself in a maze, the practice is like, how do I not get stuck? How do I just like beep, keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, keep problem solving, keep finding resources, keep finding how to make this work for you and other people? Um, I mean, of course, the alternative is like, eh, we just get stuck. We just stop. It's like dead ends everywhere, right? Um, or we just, or we feel like a victim. We feel like, oh my God, this like terrible thing has happened, right? And we just kind of like oh, fall apart. Um, we don't want to do that, right? So one of the flowers that's going to be really powerful at um, helping us take advantage of timing, even if it's like, I love this term, a black swan. Like where did that term come from? But a black swan is like a seemingly negative event and being able to take that and like turn it around so it can benefit ourselves and others and the people we love. We can just like grab the reins, turn it into an opportunity and expand beyond anything we've imagined, whether it's like internal personal growth or whether it's like business, like in the case of the Uber driver or being able to help more people than we've ever been able to help. Um, it's going to dissolve hesitation and mistrust and allow us to flourish no matter what. Like all of us would love to be able to flourish no matter what. Oh, there's always going to be problems, right? So this really helps us be solution oriented. So in September, it's going to be all about like how solid can you be? How resourceful can you be? And, you know, I think that's one of the things that leaders do is find solutions. So the mantra is going to be like, what's next? What's next? What's next? Like something bad happens and it's like, what's next? Um, right before this call, um, Taylor and Justin were working so hard on all the tech. And then like two minutes before the call, they were like, oh my gosh, no one is going to be able to hear the audio. <laughs> it's like, right. You can't stop. What's next? What's next? So this is really going to build our muscle and just like being able to roll with it and make things work. Okay. So November, November is a big month, right? Um, does, uh, uh, November is going to be about looking at the places where we feel rigid or have shoulds. Like I should do this, or I should do that, or I should do this, or you should do that, or you should do that judgments, right. Or like one way thinking it's gonna like elicit us to be more open, to be more curious. And I think with that comes the sense of being more carefree. It's going to help us soften towards ourselves and others, right? Like if we don't have that rigidity, we're softer. Because if we have the hardness and the rigidity and like this only happens this way, one way, we cut ourselves off from opportunities and innovation or like, I have to do it like this, or I have to do it like this, or, I have to do it like this. Where are we rigid with ourselves or others? 
where can be where can we be more curious like if you're going to work and you take the same route every day when can you take a different route or can you just like be spontaneous or you know you see a new coffee shop just go in and get a cup of coffee like when can you deviate from your routines um we're also going to get better at letting things unfold especially if you're used to strict timelines like just letting things unfold um and not letting perfection hold us back I think it's going to also be like opening us to some more magic, right? It's like if we're rigid and we only, we think there's only one way, we cut ourselves off from beneficial, unexpected experiences and synchronicities, right? Open up to more magic. One flower that helps us do that is this super wild looking Ocotillo cactus. It looks like, you know, flames in the desert. And it dissolves our tendency to judge. It helps us see things around us in a really fresh way and um, just be open to a wider variety of experiences. It softens our shoulds. I should do that or I should do it this way or it should be done this way or this is the only right way to do it. Um, we will criticize ourselves less. I mean, I think a lot of these too, like if you hear this and you're like, oh, this doesn't really resonate, like I'm not really a judgy person, then look at like how much you judge yourself. Right. And how much you criticize yourself or how hard on how hard on yourself that you are for a lot of things. Right. So it's like, how could we be more carefree? Not only like even in our physical bodies or just in what we choose to do with our time, if we're feeling carefree and we can open to more miraculousness, weirdness and synchronicity. So it'll the month of November will be like how so, how much can I soften towards myself how curious and carefree can I be and how much can I open to life That's a really fun question how much can I open to life And that's one of those questions that I love cuz there really isn't an answer right it just kind of like leaves you hanging how much can I open to life and then later something will come in about another way that you can open Okay, December. December is going to be about being direct and shameless and blunt and asking for what you want and being able to express yourself with even more confidence. Um, I remember when a friend of mine moved here from California and he like has this, um, probably maybe because he lived in Japan too and people don't like to say no there, but it's like, you know, you would say like, do you want this? And be like, well, I'm okay. And I think I remember. And it's like this whole kind of like long story in a circle and it'd be like, is that a yes or a no? Oh, is that a yes or a no, right? Um, so it's like it's like learning how to like speak clearly and just like let it rip, say it as it is, be really direct. Like yes, no. Well, I think a lot of us, all of us actually use too many words. Other cultures and other languages don't have so many words as we do. This is going to help us get more to the point because sometimes the more words we have, the more confused we are. My teacher always says, um, you know, like if you're talking to someone and you're not quite sure what they're saying to just always clarify, are you saying this? Are you saying this? Is this what you're saying? Um, so our communication is going to get tighter and then we'll be able to cut through being like shy and timid. We'll be better able to ask for what we want and to be vulnerable. Um, here's a really weird example. Okay, I was just traveling right back and forth with Dallas in the airport. Many of you, if you're traveling, you've seen that now they have these like new biometrics um, cameras. So when you go through security, instead of just like handing them your license, oftentimes they'll just have like a camera right on your face and want your, your whatever, their, their face, your irises, whatever they're looking at. Um, and when they first put those out, they didn't tell anyone that it was optional. I'm, I'm so in the habit of opting out of that big machine that I just like asked the first time, like, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't have to do this. Right. And they said, no, you don't have to do it. Then later they started putting up signs that say it is optional. So you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Right. Um, now it's like, if you put your license in without saying you don't want it, then you have to do it. Right. So there's all this like, but they don't tell you that anyway, a lot of confusion and being able to just say like, even in those situations with authority, with security, you want to get somewhere, you want to fly from here to here. You don't want to like slow it down. Right. But just to ask, like, am I required to do this? Or can I just like give you my license? Right. Things that are like situations where you feel like, oh, where you feel like big sneeze from the dog. Um, like just, you know, like, 
no one's asking and you feel a little bit like pressure, we're going to get better at just like not holding back. Like just ask, right? Because we don't want to play small. We don't want to hold back. We don't want to keep quiet. We don't want to do something and be like, ah, damn, and regret it or like resent it, right? So um, one of the flowers, she's having a great time over there. One of the flowers um, for what month are we on? Are we still in November? December. We're in December. Um, for December is going to be the wild snapdragon. Such a cool flower. Um, and it's it's going to help us like say what we need to say, ask for what we want to, to be direct, to be blunt, shameless, confident, like shameless in our bodies and our expression and be able to just say it like it is, cut through any shyness or holding back. So we'll want to ask ourselves in December, ooh, this is like the month of holidays too. <laughs> How open and honest can I be? And the mantra is just like, be direct, be direct, be direct. Like, what's the most direct way to say this? Be direct, be direct. Okay, January. We're almost there. January is going to help us see the hidden beauty in things and try to see life as more of an adventure. We've gotten on kind of a rat wheel, right? With all this digital stuff, it's really easy to be like stuck in our calendars and our phones and all the texts and the WhatsApp and the like millions of ways that we can communicate with people in our phones and social media. And it's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, part of it is like, uh, getting off the internet and maybe pushing back from, um, your cell phone a little bit to go live something more out in real time, right? Discover something new, go to a new park, have a, like, have a look at your backyard or your front yard in a new way, like get down on the level of an ant and see the way the earth looks, right? Taking your children with a more curious and adventurous spirit, um, because mm, I think sometimes we just kind of get stuck in mental loops, right? And we like to struggle. Like some of us are on the struggle bus. Like what percentage of our days are we on the struggle bus um, or suffering or stressing about something or like worrying, right? And we want to diminish that habit. We want to um, see beyond what's apparent and like see more beauty. So what's going to help us like get past the surface level of things and get deeper and also like literally help you see the world in a different way. And I'm telling you, this flower actually will help you see the world in a different way. It's like peeling off the kind of routine boring filter off your eyeballs, right? And you just like see things in a beautiful way that you've never seen them before. And it's like enjoyment and pleasure. And even if you're in a parking lot, right, all of a sudden things look beautiful. It gives us more of a sense of wonder and curiosity and adventure. Um, so the question we're going to want to ask ourselves in January, how much can we warm up our hearts? How much can you warm up your heart and like see the beauty all around you? Okay. So we made it through all six months. I'm just going to like do a really quick overview and then I'll, um, I'll give you some ways at the end to like give you a boost on your intentions. Okay. So as an overview, we're in the dragon year. Um, right now, everything that you do will affect the next 20 years of your life. It's the time to take action. Um, it's the time to like reflect on what is it that you want to tell the truth to yourself about what you want. Um, and at the same time, be open and see like what the unexpected adventures will bring you. It's a time to focus on your priorities um, like what, what, what are the most important things to you right now? It's really, really, really important to know that because then you can put your energy and your resources into just your priorities. Let all the stuff that's not important go. If we can get more and more into the habit of like the stuff that's really not important, let it go and do what is most important to us. It's also time to focus on our inner knowing to not be as influenced by the people, mm, the powers that be the news, social media, anybody around us. It's like, of course, we listen, we observe, we take it in, but there's always got to be this moment of like, and how does it sit with me? And where do I stand on this? And how can I like sink deeper into my sense of self-trust and my knowingness, right? And if maybe you don't know right now, wait until you do, wait until it's clear. And like to be able to get in touch with your inner wisdom, it's time for that to take place. It's really important to be a leader right now. Um, leaders are also humble, right? But also to say like, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of taking a lead. Don't be afraid of taking a leap. Don't be afraid of getting out of your comfort zone, of trying something new. 
a lot can happen and there are so many possibilities. The dragon year is the only animal sign in the Chinese zodiac that's mystical, right? And that means that anything this year is possible and we can springboard off of that energy. Anytime you get stuck, remind yourself that you don't know what can happen next or who might just call you up randomly out of the blue to help you find a solution, right? Because you're making effort towards something, mag magic will arise. When you work really hard towards something or work really smart or just put effort or take action or make a move or take a step, miracles can happen. Um, and also on the other end, wishes don't come true without an effort. So um, we do need to make an effort. We do need to take action, um, but you don't have to make it happen, right? It's going to be about everything. Okay. It's going to be about less exertion and depletion, right? Now is the time to figure out how we can do our lives with less exhaustion and less depletion. Um, and also really, really important, the more that we see our disappointments, the easier it gets, right? So oftentimes I think um, when shit hits the fan or something really uncomfortable happens, we want to like not look at it or ignore it or numb it out, pretend it's not there. The more that we can acknowledge and look at what is it that trips us up? What triggers us? What sends us into a tailspin? What bugs you? What makes you angry? What gives you anxiety? What pisses you off? Like all of those things are incredible opportunities for growth and transformation. It's actually like the key, right? It's like the key to unlocking you and your power and your potential are all those like, you know, it's like compost. Like I use this example a lot because it's like, has anybody seen a compost, like a real one? My family used to have one and they're like slimy and sludgy and yucky and smell bad and yuck, right? And that is what makes the most beautiful gardens and the most beautiful flowers and fruits and vegetables. So all that to say, all the things inside you that are the most uncomfortable, that are like most keeping you up at night, that bug you, that bother you, that take you off your center, those are huge opportunities. Don't ignore them. And the more that you look at them and just like acknowledge without like, you know, I mean, you might freak out, but without judging yourself, um, the more that you, the more, the less that they'll control you and the more that you'll, they'll diminish themselves. So don't suppress any of that. Recognize and acknowledge it. Like for example, let's say um, somebody got pissed off at me, right? Maybe I used words that didn't like, they didn't like, right? So then I'll just like humble myself and learn how to use a different word, right? Um, looking at the places that where we like get uncomfortable and using that as power, power to evolve and change. The other thing is to be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself, be kind to yourself. If you have a hard time being kind to yourself, it is now the time to learn how to nourish yourself. I'm learning that um, in my personal life and in my health. Like it's time to nourish. Don't be too gung-ho about things, right? It's like the middle path. If we're a little bit lazy, we need to make more effort. We need to take more action. Or if we're a little bit scared, take more action. Like be more fearless. If we're like doing too much and we're too hard on ourselves, maybe back off, maybe soften a little bit. Um. And also, like, I just want to, like, emphasize the magic quality of this year. There is something magic about this timing. There is something extra special, powerful, right? We only get to live this time once in our lifetimes where the wood has so much growth and potential and the mystical dragon. Um, <laughs> somebody was reminding me today, in one year, how many times does a bird poop on your head, right? This is like in Asia, people say it's really lucky because it's so rare, but it does happen, right? Like nothing worse than like you're in really nice clothes and you're going somewhere to like an important meeting and ah, like a bird shits on you, right? But it's happened, right? It has happened, right? So things that seem rare, because it does seem rare, are possible. And that's um, a reminder for all of us to like remember that when that's like the magic of the universe right is like when we take action on something we get support um and then also the reminder is that in the second half of the dragon year we may begin to experience digestive issues if we don't already 
one of the ways that we can um, like ramp up the next six months, the end of the year and give your intentions a massive boost is by joining us during the smoke offering um, and healing our digestive systems and everything else. Um, so just really quick, um, earlier in the call, you wrote down a lot of things, answers to those 21 questions. I'm just curious if you got any insights. Is there anything that like you circle, you'd want to circle because it surprised you or some kind of theme or an aha moment or something that really struck you as unusual? Is it clear like what's really important to you? If you're struggling with like, ah, I don't really know what I want. Um, there is a flower for that. It's, it's the Nepali Daphne and it's in a, a blend that we have called divine timing. And it's just like, it helps you in one month really really like every single day like what's most important to me what's most important to me it's amazing it's like the, like kind of like a gentle whip you know like it just completely aligns me with the most important priorities that you have um if you fill up for it um feel free to type into the chat any insights you got any like themes you're seeing and your own answers that you wrote or like the most important thing that you want to take action on in the second half of the year um if you feel drawn to it, feel free to add that. I know um, this call we had to, because of all the people joining, we had to shift the format so that you can't see each other. So at least you can see your energy and essence in the chat. If anything were possible, what do you want to take action on over the next six months? And think big. And also, where do you need support? Um, where do you need like, something to like hold you accountable or where do you need community or like maybe you're just like ah just tell me what to do just tell me what to take help me focus on where i need to go one way to do that is through the flower evolution if you're not familiar with um lotus way we have a subscription program called the flower evolution and every month we just send you a flower elixir and a support mist um like luxurious yummy essential oils mist and we send it to your door this particular flower will elicit all the qualities that we want for the collective. It's like individual and collective um, in order to embody more leadership and potential. So um, in the flower evolution program, you learn a lot more about the flower and the magic of it. You zero in on what it's doing for you personally. Um, there's a community group, um, all kinds of stuff are in the program. You can find more about that um, on our website, lotusway.com under flower evolution. But like all the stuff that's in it, you could even just like put that to the side. And if all you did was work with that flower elixir every month, um, it will do the shifting around for you, right? Of course, it's better if you're like aware and you see like, oh, wow, this is happening. Oh, this is happening inside me. Whoa. Like that's more interesting when you can like focus and be aware of it. But if all you do is just take the flower elixir, it will already start to shift things around in you. Okay. Also, we made um, for this Wood Dragon finale because it's so like such a juicy time period. We made like a planner slash journal slash tracker, right? It's kind of like an accountability thing for yourself or like, I mean, I don't know if you're like me, I use this like crazy box more than I would like to. And it's like my calendar and my notes and my email and text and WhatsApp and signal. Like everything is in this little box, right? But a part of me is just like longing for a notebook all the time. Like, I just want a notebook. I just want to write my stuff in a notebook. So, um, you know, if you're fully digitalized, but like part of you just wants a book where you can put all your priorities and it's meant to like, this isn't meant to be like a planner of like, well, I have this appointment and this appointment. And then you look at it and you're like, God, my life is so busy. No, that's not the intention of this book. It's like, this is like my precious book of all the things that are the most important to me, where I can track all the most important things, like things that are on my heart or things that you want to just like track, right? Where you can just jot everything down. It's all in one place. And this is like six months of your life right here, like of your growth, of your acceleration, your expansion, all the things you're up to, your struggles, right? If you want to like write down your aha moments, your insights, I want to write down like what I eat every day because I'm curious about that. I need more protein, right? Like so many things in our lives that we need to track movement, exercise, meditation, practice, your moods. Like every time you, you know, have like a tantrum or shit hits the fan, like it's helpful to jot it down. I always tell people um, in meditation classes that I used to write down when I would become really angry and I would like 
document in my little meditation book how long it took me to get over my anger, right? And some days it was like five days, like I was angry about something for a week, right? And then over the years, it was like three year, three days, two days, one day, a few hours, right? So like, and depending on the intensity, you know, maybe a few minutes. So when you start looking at things and tracking things, they change. Um, so you can write down your moods, your healing crisis, um, your period, if you're a woman, the moons, important dates, goals, wins, successes, like, I don't know, what else do you want to track? Maybe there's something I haven't even thought of. Like, if you can think of something else, type it in the chat, because I'd love to know, like, what else do you want to track? Anyway, so it's beautiful. Um, they each month is like, segmented into different flowers. But if you, even if you don't take those flowers, and you do something else, it's still really helpful, because there's like days, you know, so you can plan your day or write down or track stuff day by day there's like journaling prompts and questions to just like elicit like what's happening what's going on and what are those most important things to you what are you focused on what are you working on what are you accomplishing like remember is like this time period will impact the next 20 years of our life so this is all like all of these things are in order to get all of us on board with what we're here to do while we're here right life is short like all of us who showed up to this call are leaders. Like it's time to freaking embody like the maximum impact of whatever leadership we're here to, to display. It's time to be as creative and innovative and resourceful and open and soft and curious and carefree as we can allow ourselves to be. Like let's like spin a wheel, like get it moving, right? So that it can manifest with more power over the next 20 years and the rest of our lives. Okay, again, um, so there's a flower evolution program, there's this kind of tracker planner journal, and then the, um, a couple of the last things I want to mention, um, again, to reiterate, if you want to jumpstart the next six months, either now for the smoke offering or later, or you can do one in person or a private ceremony, or you want to come to Phoenix and visit us in the Sun Center and do your own private ceremony and your own smoke, smoke offering, all of these things are possible um, for you and available. And whether you, whether it's something that you understand or you don't understand, or you believe it could be true or not, or it feels kind of interesting, or it doesn't even matter. It is like, I can tell you from my experience, it is extremely um, powerful collective to tap into and a way to dedicate extra energy and love and resources to yourself and to the people that you really care about. Uh, another way that you can like tune into that quiet part of you that just knows things, right? There's a part of you that is wiser beyond your imagination that knows so much more than you think you know. It's the part of you that like when somebody shows you a bunch of flower images and says, pick the top three that you're most attracted to. And then they tell you what they're for. And it's like, oh my God, I feel so like exposed, right? That's so me. The part of you that knows which flowers to pick. It's like that wise, ancient, all-knowing being. If you want to tap into that more, uh, Lisa is doing meditation classes. She's doing cl uh, classes live and in person twice a week at the Sun Center. Every Tuesday, they're live streamed. Um, so if you want to, like, sometimes it helps to just, like, carve out a time, right? And then um, as you carve out that time, it'll be easier to just, like, sit for five minutes tomorrow and sit for five minutes the next day. And I can tell you, the people that I see coming for Lisa's meditation classes like phenomenal they're like going home and doing their five minute or more meditations every day and they're evolving like it is it's just something to watch it's amazing and it's a gift that we can all give to ourselves so I want to thank you so much for coming tonight and let you know that we have a whole team of people here to support you to give you information to connect you with whatever flowers you want to be connected to or support um, whether it's the flower evolution or flower elixirs um, you know, or a book to write stuff down and see where you're going or what direction you're in and what's most important to you, a smoke offering, a meditation class or something else. Um, there's a whole team of people waiting uh, to support you. So thank you again for joining tonight. If you're interested in sort of like taking this whole next dragon year to the next level, you can find more information on lotusway.com slash flower revolution. And if that you can think of it as flower evolution or you can think of it as flower revolution there's just one r it's up to you um you can get more information there thank you so much for being here thank you for being fearless for being a leader and for spreading positivity and love 
in the world. Thank you. Thank you.